Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to Pure Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we are starting a new series on marriage. And I want to share in this episode how to build the foundation for a successful marriage through developing intimacy with the Lord in the secret place. That as an individual, you must develop that relationship with the living God. Let me start by explaining this. You look how God created all things. He was an absolute perfectionist. He creates all things and he declares good. He looked at them at the minutest level, at the very finite level, and he says, good. Then he looks at Adam, who is created in his own image, and he says, not good. Then man should live alone, and he creates Eve. Marriage was designed by God, and therefore it is under the, the rules. It works and flows by the way he sets. And as you look at Adam, Adam first had a relationship with the living God. He creates Eve, he makes Eve, and he has this moment with Eve because Eve had to have a relationship with the Lord God first before she is presented to Adam. And it was out of this relationship with the living God that they were able to truly enjoy the depth of marriage that God had. Sadly today, as we look at statistics, divorces uh, in Christians is as high as it is in the world. And that is so sad because the Christian marriage should reflect the greatest thing on earth. We should be a representation of the how Jesus loves the church, a demonstration of the power of his love and how God can take two people and make them one out of this intimacy with him. It is only as we abide in the vine, it is only as we are locked into him that we are able to allow that life and that fruit to come forth from us. I really pray that this message, where I'm going to share four critical steps that will truly help you build a foundation for your marriage, will bless and minister life and be the bread of His presence. So let's start by praying. Father, we come by way of the blood. And I'm so grateful, Father God, that no matter where their marriage is at, that you're able to heal, restore, to deliver. You're able to lift. You're always wanting to bring us into something greater, to expand the pegs of our tents. I thank you, Father God, that there will be life over each marriage. There will be such a blessing over them. And Father, that in the name of Jesus, you would draw them as individuals into a greater intimacy with you. That, Father, that our marriages would be a witness, that the world would see Jesus in us and through us and see a true reflection of the church and your love for it. I thank you, Father, for marriage. I thank you for my spouse. And I thank you, Father, for the bread of your presence, a word in season. Let it minister life to each person, to each marriage, and may it bring you the glory. I thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart, that we would receive your word and that your word would have the impact that you desire in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. In John chapter 19, where we're going to start here, verses 13 through 15, Jesus said, He flees because he's a hired hand and not concerned about the sheep. And I want to stop there. He flees, and he's talking about the hireling. He's talking about how, and if we put this in light of marriage, there's so many people come into marriage based on what they can get out out of it and they have, don't have the commitment they don't have the love for their spouse they're not thinking about their spouse it's all about them and when the trials come and the difficulties come based on what they want then they flee if i'm not getting out of it what i want then there's the problem and they're not worried about what are they putting into it now look at jesus he says i am the good shepherd and I know my own, and my own know me. So let's stop there. I am the good shepherd. I am good. And out of that goodness, I know my own. I take time. I invest time. I am committed to them, and they know me. I am open to them. I'm receptive to them. See, so many marriages fall apart because we close down. We stop being open. We don't take the time to know 
and be known. The time to pour out and to pour in, to receive the other one, to listen to what they have to say. And we're going to discover that today. As we look, it's all about the time we spend in the secret place to pursue Him, to knock, to ask, to seek, that we might have a hold of Him and have that relationship so that He knows us and we know Him. And that must be the foundation of which we built. Jesus went on. Even as the Father knows me and I know the Father. You see the standard. His ability to do this was based on this. Your ability to build a strong marriage, to see your marriage restored, to see your marriage go to a new level, is built upon this. The time and commitment, the investment you make in this, pays off this way. And we so often focus on the wrong things. And often as you look at the core things that fell apart, they start when this falls apart. When we start to get distracted and we don't spend time seeking His face, because out of this He holds us accountable and He works in us to both to will and to do His good pleasure. He went on to say, out of this, and I lay my life down for the sheep. Because of that love that I have for the Father and the Father has for me, it now impacts me so that I see and think and act. And He walked His life in a radical obedience to the Father out of love. He wasn't doing it legalistically, but out of absolute love. The greatest worship that you can bring, the living God, is to simply come and do it because you love Him. To come to know Him because you love Him. To honor and worship because you love Him. And so that what you do is always a reflection of that love. I want to start here. Number one, He must be my Jesus in the secret place. That as an individual, you must develop a relationship with the living God in the secret place. You must commit and invest time to pursue Him. In Corinthians 1, so 1 Corinthians, sorry, chapter 8, verse 3. But if anyone knows God, he is, sorry, if anyone loves God, he is known by Him. So that in this relationship where I know Him, the demonstration is the love I have for Him. That's what drives me to come after Him. That's what consumes this vessel. Paul will go on to say that this love controls me, that I see all men as dead because of Christ. And so how I pursue and think of people. Stop thinking of your spouse based on what they've done wrong and start to see them through the blood. And the only way you can do that is to get into the secret place and hear from Him. If you've been injured and hurt and damaged, you need the Father's touch. You need the Master to minister first to you so that you are healed, you are restored, and then you start to see your spouse differently. Not out of the hurt, not out of the injury, but out of the love. That will change everything. When you think, walk, act out of the outflow, the afterglow of this intimacy and His love. In Matthew 6, 5, Jesus said this, But you, when you pray, go into the inner room, close your door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who, is in, uh, who sees in secret will reward you. I'm so grateful that the love of Jesus is unchanging because the reality is we fall short. We may not always reveal because we are so often ashamed of the things we've done wrong, the shamed of our past, the shamed of so many things. And like Adam and Eve, we cover. But see, in the secret place, you can come as you are and in that place, so open up to the one who will correct you but He so loves you that that love is so sure and so strong that you know no matter what, even if He afflicts me, I can trust Him because of His love. That everything He does is always to bring me to the right place, the better place, to lift me. And it's in this place where He wants to begin to do work in you to change you. Most of us think it's the spouse, it's the other one 
where the problem is. That if they would change, if they would do this, if they would listen to me, if they would hear my thoughts, if they would hear my opinions, if they, but in the secret place of His presence, the call because of this love is to lay down our lives. And that is perhaps one of the most challenging things and the greatest price that as an individual we must pay. But it's only when we do that that He can bring us in, where He can circumcise off the old harshness of our hearts and bring us into a place where we can be tender and loving, and that place where we can finally enjoy because we walk secure. See, you're not dependent upon your spouse. You're dependent upon Him. You are secure in Him. So it's not whether your spouse does this or that. It is based on what He has done and what He is doing. And that love that is consistent and unchanging, you need to know that. John would write in his first letter, chapter 4, that we come to know and to believe the love of God. We come to know it. We have to spend time in the secret place to come to know it. Let me just get the verse because this is important. Uh, it's not in my notes, but I really believe right now this is something that I encourage you in the secret place to meditate upon. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. We have come to know and have believed in the love which God has for us. So as I come to know it, and I invest time. You can't do this in five minutes. You're going to have to invest time. Hebrews 11, 6 says that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And that's that pursuit. It's that going after. I don't come based on how I feel. Whether I feel something or not is irrelevant. I come based on the authority of the Word. And I know He will meet me. And He will never fail. He will always meet you if you seek Him. If you keep seeking and knocking and asking, He will answer. If you read the Gospel, there were times where there were people came in need, crying out to Him, and He didn't respond. And they cried out louder, He didn't respond. They cried out louder and they made it clear, I'm not quitting. And He did respond. And so a lot of times it's that test, do you really want it? And the reality is, many of us want to get out of the current crisis but we don't want to change. And God doesn't want to just get you out. He wants to bring you out to bring you in. He wants to take you out of all to bring you into what He has, to bring you into the depth of marriage that He created. Right now, marriage is under assault. The world is attacking marriage because they don't see the true reflection of the marriage He created. And it's time the church reflected that. And that's when we have responsibility to get in and say, God, I come, have your way in all of me. That I'm so grateful. Do you stand before the Lord thankful, grateful for marriage? Many of you, you know, you were so desiring marriage for years. Then you get into it and you're ungrateful because you're going through things you don't like. Instead of going after Him with the spirit of gratitude and allowing Him to bring the marriage to where He wants it by starting in you. I believe that a lot of time it's because of the insecurities in us and our response to that we stop treating the other correctly and they the same and gaps start to develop. Walls start to go up. But in that secret place, God begins to do work on you and break down those walls in you. But give you a, a wall of salvation that you stand secure because the reason we put walls up is I don't want to get hurt. And maybe you've gone through some things where you have been injured. Maybe there's been infidelity. And that infidelity, you know, everything you see reminds you of it. It constantly comes to your memory. And, you know, your spouse does this, and all of a sudden, you need healed in the secret place. You need the divine touch in the secret place where God ministers to you and takes that out of you heals you and makes you secure. Now there has to be repentance, I know that, and we'll deal with that in another episode and that restoration. But in this, and I'm talking right now on the individual, okay? So we're talking in this episode about people, individuals, so that God brings together and that as an individual, your responsibility is to seek Him.
and to allow him to do the work in you and stop focusing on the other. Just get this right. This is what we're talking about in this episode. This, you and the living God, okay? So that you might know the love and believe the love which God has for you. And the one abides in love, abides in God, and God abides in him. So it always takes you to what? A greater intimacy. As I pursue and I come to know, and I get that understanding by the Spirit of everything Jesus did, the demonstration of that love, I begin to believe it. And as I press into deeper waters believing it, I come to the deeper revelation that I find myself lost in Him and yet found, abiding in Him and Him in me, changing me. There's nothing greater than you being changed. And when you can look at yourself and see the change that He is doing, doesn't matter if anybody else sees it. He sees it and you see it. That's most beautiful. Just allow that change to continue and see what God can do. Allow Him to work in you. Listen very carefully. He said that if we do this in secret, He rewards. Because there's a seed sown and it will always produce harvests. The Christian marriage should be uh, the greatest revelation of the Father's love for Jesus and the church, his love for the church. And it's time that we, like Jesus, we're known by him and he knows us. Sorry, we know him. Amen. Number two, every relationship requires an investment. You cannot simply build upon where you were yesterday. Let's start with our relationship with the Lord. You may have had a powerful experience with him last week, last year. You may have been in great prayer and you're just in his presence and it was awesome. But what about today? See, we live in today and every relationship is built upon today. And it's where you are today that's so important. You know, and many of us, we have bad days. We have bad moods and we don't communicate correctly. We need to be changed in the secret place. And what you do first is so important. And this relationship with Him where we allow Him to work in us and change us becomes important. In 1 John chapter 4, 21, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he's seen cannot love God whom he's not seen. So we can talk about this, but if I'm not walking in this, it proves me false. See, I have found the more I pursue Him, the more I love Him and allow His love in me, it causes me to love. So this causes the outflow. It has to. I cannot claim this if this is not happening. And in this place, He's able to do a work in me, to put a love in me for my spouse like no other, to show me the treasure of her and how to love her accurately. He does the work in me so that what I do comes forth by his touch and his hand. So it's not of me, but it's something beautiful. But there has to be a development. There has to be, and I've already said this, this investment, this commitment. You cannot just give a one day. I did this here. What about today? And it's the same thing with your spouse. You may have had a great day yesterday, a week ago, a month ago. But relationships require a commitment of time day after day. They must be always a pressing into deeper water, a desire to go further, to see that relationship enriched, to see this relationship go to a new level. Content, but never satisfied. Paul would explain that he was content, but never satisfied. I want more. It's the same thing with my relationship with the Lord. I look at Paul. Paul perhaps came the closest to walking this thing out. He probably, you know, walked that relationship with the Lord the closest. And yet in his last letter, the Philippians, he turns and says, I press on to know him. He did not say, I have arrived and you have not arrived. You have not arrived in this relationship and you have not arrived in this. So you must commit to time. I encourage you to set aside time and to be spontaneous. 
There's something beautiful about the commitment of time and bringing spontaneity to just at any moment out of just love to spend time, to come and to simply listen, to come. See, we think of communication as my expressing my thoughts, my opinions. You need to hear me. And most relationships are built upon you need to hear me. But we have to learn how to hear him and hear our spouse because it comes about us laying down our lives in a security. But what about my thoughts? See, in this secret place, I've become secure. In this place, He's my source, He's my provider. I've cast that care into Him. I have a security and I am comforted in Him. I'm stopped looking to people to fulfill what only He can, and I know He can. And so this becomes first. And throughout my day, I just come into His presence and seek Him. And when I'm going through it, and I'm going through that challenge, I'm seeking Him. See, it's what you do proactively and reactively that's so important. If you would spend time proactively pursuing Him, proactively developing and investing time in this, and proactively investing time in this, many things would change. And then when the challenges come, how you react, so you don't react emotionally. You don't act based on your flesh, but you react based on this. You look at Jesus when the pressure was on him greatest, when the attacks were against him, he responded in the depth of love, looking at us through the love, not looking at us through his rights, not looking at us saying, listen, you know who I am, but rather he said, because I know who I am, you are precious to me. This is what I'm seeking. And so we get after him. And so spend time, be committed to time, and be spontaneous, and come to simply listen. Develop this. Give me ears to hear, eyes to see, to receive, to be able to hear what you're saying accurately, to be able to hear you accurately, to hear your heart, to be able to minister to you because I hear you. In 1 John 3, 18, little children, let us love with, sorry, let us not love with word or with our tongue, but in deed and truth. See, many people put on a show in church, and I've seen that. You know, you see these people that make this uh, impression that they are the greatest Christian. They show they are the greatest in all these ways, and it's all an act. They've learned how to put on their church face. But see, Jesus is not interested in church faces. He's interested in this. Does he have your heart? Is he enthroned on the throne of your intimacy and your imagination? So that your, uh, your heart is wholly, completely his, is what I'm saying. Because when this is true, I don't have to put on a show. I simply be who I am. Whether you see it or not, I don't care because of this. I look to Him. I come, Romans 12, chapter, chapter 12, verse 1. Every day I present myself before Him. Are you smiling? Did I miss it? Did I fall short? It's about me. And I'm allowing Him to do work in me so that what I'm doing is true. It is real. My third point, and it's about the secret place of our hearts. See, who occupies this? Many of us come into marriage because of what we want, and we continue to fulfill our lusts and our desires. We do all these things, and we think it's okay. We will so, listen to this in Galatians 6, verses 7 through 8. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from his flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. What you're sowing to? Well, it's just innocent. We're just looking at something innocently. We're just looking at this small, soft pornography innocently. 
But what we don't realize is that when we sow to the flesh, it will cause a harvest down the line that we don't want. And many of us are walking in the harvest of bad seeds that we sowed maybe last week, last year, whatever. And we need to change our tomorrow by changing our today, by taking the very secret place of our heart. See, He invites you to come by way of His blood, the finished work of the cross, to come in as you are. But we don't just come in and stay as we are. And this is the important part. I'm so grateful for what He did on the cross, but that's not where it stops. He takes us as we come and believe in Him, and He makes us a new creation. He then calls us to renew our minds so He gives us a responsibility. Because what grabs mind share ultimately grabs heart share. And it ultimately becomes consumed in the secret place of your heart. In that secret place, what's in us? We will hold on to hurts and injuries, particularly marriage where you've been betrayed, let down, disappointed. And because I don't want to get disappointed again, it's here. And I relive it. If you've been injured, how many times do you relive that injury? But in this relationship, in the secret place of the Father's heart, He opens up to me. And He says, open up. And it's sometimes the hardest. And it takes time. Sometimes it's a process. And there's a baptism of tears, crying out and being broken. And being broken. And being broken. And because this is most important. No matter what happens, remember, this is the most important thing. Thing. and him having access to the secret place, him being enthroned there and removing all those things that only are causing you injury and hurt. He wants to deliver you from it. He wants to bring you to a place where you are free and you are happy. And it starts in the secret place of your heart. All those things cast onto him. All those things worked out with him. And there comes a day where you say no, to those thoughts, no to those things, because they no longer have place. That place, your secret place of your heart, is a precious treasure given to the Lord, and you allow nothing in there that would grieve or offend Him. That place is holy unto Him, and I don't want the hurts and brokenness. All those things that all they've done is destroyed me, driven me from Him and from my spouse. So there's a healing when the secret place of your heart becomes his. When it's sold out in Romans 12 verses 1 and 2, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is and what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Now, continuing on, let me read something else to you. In Mark Chapter 10, verses 6 through 9. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no one separate. Now think about that. Let no one separate. And that includes us. The Greek word joins together. I'm not going to try to pronounce it means to fasten, yoke together, and join together so as to make one. And that's what God will do because He does the work in the heart in you in the secret place, if He has the secret place of your heart. If we allow other things, and today we have so many things like the internet, that can so capture us, wrong things, relationships. And, and I want to so encourage you, you got to guard that secret place of your heart. And don't allow wrong relationships in that steal this and steal this. You protect. You guard this. Paul explained to Timothy, a spiritual son, in his letter to him, second letter, guard by the Holy Spirit, the treasure in you. This is a treasure. This is a treasure. And you will discover it when you start to see your spouse 
through what Jesus did, through the price that he paid, first when he reels, brings you to revelation of the depth of his love where you were, where he lifted you, because we have a mindset that we're perfect, they're not. But when you stand before the Lord, he has a powerful way of taking you and demonstrating to you where you were and the depth of his love and how he lifted you so that you start to become abounding in mercy. And as that scripture says, morning by morning, his mercies, and it's his loving kindness, his faithfulness is new. I want to know that every morning. I want to know the depth of his mercy towards me so that I'm walking in the same mercy, seeing through the same eyes, and allowing him to build in me an understanding of the treasure of this marriage and that how he is the one that brings together. It's not in my doing. And that's where I'm saying to you, we come and you're not listening to me when the person that you need to be heard by is him. The person you become secure in because we're trying to make this one and it's not us. He will do it. And he will make you satisfied because your satisfaction is in him. Your love, your joy, your peace are in him. And now you just simply love out of that outflow, whether you receive or not, it's not relevant. There's an outflow because you're receiving from him. Now, if I continue, I want to bring to my fourth point, and that is run together. In Ecclesiastes 4.9, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. And in Ecclesiastes 4.12, and if anyone, sorry, if one can overpower him who was alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. One of the biggest difficulties in marriage is because we don't forge this as individuals and then, as we'll discover later, as a couple, so that we're now running in the same direction. Because God created our spouse to be a partner, a helpmate. And the vision that He's given us, that spouse is meant to support and help us run this race. And we amplify. So the calls complement. God takes people that were radically different, brings them together, and molds them, and they're able to run forward. The problem when we start to stop and get distracted by things, we start to grumble and complain. We get caught, and often those distractions become seeds sown, where we get lost in all these. I got to have this. And we start to see the imperfections in our relationship and we start to get drawn other ways and the problem is is the enemy will always persuade you something better eat of this fruit try this when what we need is this because when we do this all it produces is death all that produces destruction and hurt and it doesn't just impact you it impacts your children it impacts the people around you. And we have to start seeing the bigger consequences. And so it goes back to this word responsibility here. And that we start to build and flow together. I can't make my spouse run with me. I can't make my spouse do this. But he can. And if we allow him, if we will go after him, and we get in harmony with him, he causes a harmony in our marriage. That's what you're looking for. Where you stand together, supporting each other. And he becomes that third string that ties you together, that makes this thing unbreakable. Amen? I pray that this series will really bless and strengthen you. And that you will take to heart this foundational message and build this. Invest in this so that you stand strong in this and that this is an outflow, an afterglow, and that you start to see and that you are changed in this and so you are changed in this. Amen.
Well, I pray this message has blessed, encouraged, and helped you. And if you're going through difficulties, we're standing with you that God is the healer, the restorer, and He is more than able. And we will talk about that in the future. I thank you for watching and asking, would you please like, share, and subscribe. And if you don't currently have a church to help the ministry to draw you into this, then go to our webpage, robertpairs.org, and go to the church side and consider joining us in our Zoom service until you can find somewhere so that you may be encouraged because this is so important. Amen? Well, be blessed, be encouraged, know that you're being prayed for, you are appreciated and loved, and this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.